This is Appledore Quay in North Devon, filmed in 1959 by Dr. Basil Greenhill. And this is the Kathleen and May, in her last years as a working vessel. As far as we know, there is no other film of a British wooden-built merchant schooner working her passage. So this is a unique chance to see her on a voyage with a cargo of cattle feed, a typical cargo for her. She'd been in the Jewell family since 1932. And you can see that Tommy Jewell, her master at this time, used to keep her in good trim. Originally, she'd been a Welsh vessel, the Lizzie May of Connors Quay in North Wales. Here she is sliding into the River Dee in April 1900 from Ferguson and Baird's shipyard. A great event for all the locals. Captain John Kopak owned the largest share of her. And this is Elizabeth Ellen Kopak, one of his two daughters, who gave the ship her original name. She was a strongly built coastal schooner who spent her life trading around the West Country and Irish coast. In her first eight years alone, she sailed nearly 40,000 miles and carried 24,786 tons of cargo, varying from salt to stone, from galvanized iron to gunpowder and coal. Here she is in her original rig as she would have appeared in her prime. Three-masted with a full suit of fore and aft sails and yards for square topsails on her foremast. But by 1959, with a few groundings, collisions and other knocks over the years, Kathleen and May, as she had been called since 1908, was somewhat altered in order to compete with fully powered motor coasters, although she still continued in the same trades. The Jewell family, in common with most owners in the 1930s, had installed an auxiliary engine and reduced the sail area. As you can tell, she's operated very much now as a motor vessel with auxiliary sails. At the moment, these sails aren't doing much except to strain and chafe in the choppy sea. The great days of sail really are past. But she is beautifully looked after, and she still gives the impression of a traditional vessel, with her fore and aft booms, and her wire standing rigging, dead eyes, and rope lanyards. She is making her way down the Bristol Channel. Tommy Jewell knows this coastline well. There are plenty of hazards, and only an experienced coasting master would dare to take the vessel in so close to shore to get the advantage of the tide. Many a schooner met her end on coastlines such as this. But many more simply laid up and rotted away when the railway and the petrol engine made them unprofitable to sail. Still, Tommy Jewell kept Kathleen and May running for many years out of pride and affection for a fine old vessel. Here he is steering from the side, sailing ship fashion. A skipper, a mate, and perhaps four hands was the traditional crew. And here are some of them getting ready to reach their destination, Milford Haven. There goes the A little bit more cable needed. And here's the boat. Solid and stable in a traditional West Country style. And capable of carrying nine people.
As we head for the shore, we can see Kathleen and May with her pole masts and reduced rig. On board, the rest of the crew are still lowering sails and stowing them neatly in a seaman-like way. An everyday job on an everyday trading vessel. Once upon a time, that is. Now owned by the Maritime Trust, she's a reminder of a world that has long since vanished.